Okay. Thank you for joining today. So let me just share my screen. One second. Okay, so okay, so in today's session, <laughs> we're going to be able to analyze the links between strategy and information system within an organization. So um, as we all know, we've covered yesterday the type of um, strategies company has to use when it comes to uh, developing uh, softwares and how this has to be organized within the, the enterprise uh, through each section, through each department. So uh, as we said, we're going to look into uh, how this learner will develop understanding of importance and integrating organizational strategy with the information system and the tool and techniques that can be used to analyze strategy. So they will analyze business process and recommend improvements. So uh, what we're going to look in today, we're going to look into the strategic management tools and techniques that we now required for uh, for us to have a really good management when it comes to our business. So we all know every uh, IT company will now be divided into department where they will have uh, developers, testers, software testers, then they'll have human resource, project managers and uh, uh, so on. So I would say when it comes to uh, management tools, we now have to look into what are the posters five force. So poster five force is a model that identifies and analyzes five comp competitive forces that shape every industry and help determine and industries weaknesses and strength. So five force analysis is frequently used to identify industry structure to determine corporate strategies. So what do we mean by that? This is a technique which uh, allows us to uh, measure and see the competition intensity Creativeness, creativeness and profitability of the industry or market. So there will be now uh, five main uh, forces, which are competition in the industry, potential of new entrants into the industry, power of suppliers, power of customers, threat of substitute product. So here in our diagram, we can now look into how these are done and how they correlate to each other. Where we can see at uh, rivalry among existing competitors who are now at the core of this. And uh, it, is, it is going to look like a life cycle where we have threat of new entrants bargain power of buyers, threats of substitute product or service, bargain power of suppliers, and so on. And you keep on looping. So how the type of uh, strategy management tools can be the Boston Consulting Group, which developed a metrics which will now allow to assess product lines of a company. 
and this is called the BCG matrix. So this is a portfolio planning model, which is based on the observation that company and businesses unit can classify into categories. These categories are cash goals, stars, question marks, and dogs. So this is how the matrix looks like, where we have a market growth rate, which will now be compared with the relative market share. So let's look into each one of them. So what are stars? Stars are high growth, high market shares. With this unit, are leaders in the category and products located in the quadrant are attractive as they are located in their robust um, category. And these pro products are highly competitive in the category. Then we have question marks, which like the name suggested, the future potential of this product is adaptable. So this means that the growth rate is high ahead with the high strategy uh, investment. So it is a higher risk, but at the same time, he can give higher growth margin. Cash flow is a, is a lower growth, which means he's, a, he's staying on a really safe zone, but he has a higher market share. And then we have dogs, which is a, at the bottom, and we have lower growth and low market share. Another uh, useful strategic management tool is a SWOT analysis, whereby SWOT, we're just going to look into strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat analysis related to a company. So this is going to be assessing this for aspect of a business. So SWOT analysis is very famous and uh, important because it's used for many other businesses and uh, till today is cons considered one of the best uh, techniques when it comes to uh, strategic management. So by this SWOT, what we're going to ask ourselves, we're going to look into strength. What do we do well? What unique resource can we draw on? What do others see as our strengths? Then weakness, we have to be able to answer some questions like what can we what what could we improve? Where do we have fewer resources than others? What are others likely to see as a weakness? Opportunity. We now look into what opportunity are open to you, what trends could you take advantage of, how can you turn your strength into opportunity, and then threat could be what threats could arm you, what is your competition doing, and what threats do your weaknesses expose you to. So. This SWOT analysis uh, really put you in a, a good position where you're able to analyze and identify every aspect uh, of your business. Also, we have pistol analysis, which it refers as PEST analysis. And this is a, a, an acronym which is the explained form, the notes P for political, E for economic, S for social, T for technological, L for legal, and E for environmental. Also, an effective manage strategy management tool is a marketing mix. Where we are going simply to look into the predominantly associated with the four Ps. <clears throat> and this theory was developed in the 1990s. 
And here we can see how marketing mix works, where we have place, price, promotion, people, physical environment, process, and product. So all them put together and will now give us our marketing mix. But when it comes to target market, we have four major ones, which are price, promotion, place, and product. So these are the four Ps. When it comes to looking into a larger scale, we will now look into the seven Ps, which is place, price, promotion, people, process, physical environment, and product. Here we have an analysis of how the four Ps are now compared to the four Cs where product will now relate to customer value, price will now relate to cost, place will now relate to convenience and promotion with communication. Also, we have the hands of metrics where we will now look into market development, diversification, market penetration, or product development. So when it comes to the ANSUF matrix, this model will now be essential for strategic marketing planning, where it can be applied to look of opportunities to grow revenue for the business through developing new products as service or tapping into new markets. So when it comes to uh, ANSUF matrix, we now have to look into a strategic question that can be answered using the using our, our metrics. And these questions will now look into the market penetra penetration, market development, product and development and diversification. So this is now looking into how to solve more of our existing product, also how to enter into new market effectively, how or can we develop existing product or service and how we move into new market with the new products or a service and we now have chances to increase our sales with existing customer based on how well this has been acquired. Another essential marketing uh, management tool is the Maslow hierarchy, where by definition, Maslow hierarchy of needs was developed by Abraham Maslow, a specialist in human behavioral psychology. The hierarchy was first developed to help explain the connection between basic human needs and human desire. Here's how the hierarchy will look like. So we have self Actualization, esteem needs, social needs, safety needs, and psychological needs. So when it comes to look into each of them, we now have a psychological need where these are underlying needs where we as human can live without. So these are essential primary needs. Then we have like food, water, oxygen, and so on. Then we have safety needs, which are now correlated to our safety, such as physical, financial, or security. Then we have social needs, for example, like connecting to people, such as friends and family. And esteem, needs, which will now be related to self-esteem, our confidence and positivity. And lastly, we have self-actualization, which this is realizing one's full potential of this will differ from person to person. When to use the McKenzie 7 model? So, if you can use the 7S model, is a wide variety of situation where it is usually to examine how the various parts of our organization work together. 
So the seven elements of the vacancy is looked into the framework can be strategy, structure, system, shared value, skills, style, and staff. So these are now subdivided into uh, the model categorize them into hard elements and soft elements. This is how they're going to look like in the diagram where we have structure, system, style, staff, skills, and strategy. So what do we look into by our strategy? This is our organizational plan for building or maintaining a competitive advantage over its competitors. We have structured where we're going to look how our company is organized. System, we now look into the daily activity and procedure that staff use to get the job done. Shared values, which these are the core values of our organization. And then we have style, which is how the style of leadership adopted. Then we have the uh, staff, which are our employees and their general capabilities. And lastly, we have skills, which are the actual skills and competency of our organizational employees. Well, now we're going to look into system integration. So what do we mean by integration? So this is a very broad term, system integration in this process of connecting different subsystems. So we are just simply going to integrate one environment with another one in order them to give us uh, more functionality and provide a better service for our business. Why, when it comes to software integration, it is pretty much the same concept, but this will now occur through the integration of different platform so we now have this cross platform working together in order for us to uh, be able to do more uh, stuff and increase our productivity star integration in this case is an integrative process where we're basically creating interconnection between all subsystem we will now uh, you increase the connection of every other one. So this is a diagram of a, how a star system would look like, where is the communication between different entities and they allow them to uh, exchange data and information effectively. Also, we have horizontal integration, also known as enterprise service boss. And we can see that this method is based on creating a subsystem for communication purpose. Some people will question the uh, efficiency of this and also how effective it is. And we can see how implementing enterprise service bus will now reduce the number of connection for each subsystem to one another. is how the horizontal integration would look like. So we have uh, softwares like platforms like e-commerce who now integrate with our CRM. Then we have our customer application which will now correlate with our storage and our business analysis. And lastly, we will now have our enterprise which will now correlate again with our internet. A vertical integration, which is the method where it is completely opposite to a comparison with the previous one. This will now create functional entities for subsystem, and we will now be in a vertically integrated. Also, we now look into what is enterprise system integration. So this will be a system which the pro 
and we now have the process of connecting existing system to share a communicate to share and communicate information. So it is simply the process of innovating our existing system and migrating it into a new and most effective system. So this was everything for today's session and uh, hope you the concept are now uh, well understood and I'm looking forward to see you in our next session. Thank you for joining.